Alan Argsy here. To say I am a little bit excited would be a bit of an understatement. This is a brand new map from Smith97 Gaming who, if you have heard of before, and you may not have, has made a few maps set in New Zealand, uh, particularly in FS19 and FS17. But today we're taking a look at a map called Southern Pastures. Now this is for every intent purposes a New Zealand map. Uh, everything about it just has such an awesome Kiwi vibe so if you're looking for a map to try out some Kiwi farming I think this could be the one for you. So I, like I said I'm very excited to be taking a look at this. Now a bit of information about it, it is PC only, it has been released on Facebook and I'll share a link for where you can find it down in the description. The map is based on Southern Cross Station by Hox23 and has been released with his permission. So if we have a look at the PDA in just a minute you'll see that there is some similarities in the main layout of the map from the position of the town, the roads and the river. But from about there on everything else is completely different. The landscape, the environment, the farms, the fields, everything is quintessential New Zealand and uh, I'm excited to show you that. Now the map's a little bit rough around the edges, it's not quite as polished as court farms might be, but for all intent purposes the map maker's done a fantastic job in recreating rural New Zealand and I think that is the main thing to focus on. This map does capture New Zealand in a wonderful way. So let's go and take a look at the PDA. We're going to have a look at the different fields that there are in the map. It's a little bit different to what you might normally find and then we'll go for a little bit of a look around take a little bit of a tour of the different farms, look at some of the different features and things like that just to give you a good feel for the map. So let's dive into it. So here we are looking at the PDA and like I said this is based on Southern Cross Station by Hox23. Down the bottom here the town layout is exactly the same as it is in Southern Cross Station. There is a lot of differences in the way it's been landscaped, different trees and things like that so it doesn't feel like Australia, it certainly does feel more New Zealand. We've got the train track that ran through the middle of Southern Cross Station. The river went from bottom and sort of diagonally up through the map. And then we had the main road system which went up around the top. It'd come back down. I think it actually comes back down this way. Back down here and across. And then there's a couple of other roads that kind of zigzag across the middle and things like that. But we'll go and take a look at that in a little bit more detail. So those are the main features that remain from Southern Cross Station. Equally some of the cell points are all in the same spot, we've got a grain cell point down there and one down in the bottom left corner, the sawmill is in here as well. But otherwise you can take a look there and see that there is a significant number of fields. Uh, it's very much like New Zealand, like a lot of New Zealand, very small fields compared to what others might be used to. In fact there is 117 fields in total on the map and a lot of grassland, a lot of maize, a lot of corn and things like that. Now the interesting thing is how the land parcels have been put together. So taking a look here at the farmland screen and you'll notice that all of the fields are lumped together in different land parcels. Different number of fields all grouped together and you buy those all in one go. We've got the biggest one over here number 16 which has a value of $876,000 but you can see if we just unclick off that that there is a huge number of fields in there 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 fields in there as well as some forestry land up in the top corner. So quite a different way for how things are done but I think it will give you a chance to farm in some different ways and it might determine what style of farm you might do if you are playing on here. Lots of grassland and things like that all grouped together and then some more arable fields up here in the corner and back over this side near the sawmill. So we're going to start our tour out down here, this is where we are on the map at the moment, this is the house you load in at from the start. We'll go for a drive around, we'll have a look at the farmyard that's in here, we're going to take a quick look around the town, but like I said before this is very similar to Southern Cross Station so we won't focus too much attention onto that. And then we'll head on up this way, follow some roads up here and there's a number of different sort of farmlands, farm holdings, fields, uh, sheds and things like that we will go and take a look at. So let's get into it. So we're going to make our way out the gate here onto the road. Now if we were to go to the right that would take us down to the bottom corner of the map and one of the cell points. We're going to head off along here to the left. You can see the railway tracks there and heading on down into town where the silos and things are in the distance. Now we do have a little farm lot in here again because of the way the land holdings are set up. That is a little uh, plot. Got some loading uh, yards for cattle and there's a bit of a shed in there but not much else to see. Uh, we'll go and take a look in here though because this is one of the very first big farm yards that we will go and have a look at and probably one of the main ones. Uh, not that there's any 
specific main ones or anything like that but this is certainly one of the big ones on the farm nice to see the uh fonterra fonterra dairy for life uh tag there on the gate that's the number the registration number that dairy farms have each dairy farm in new zealand has its own unique identifier and that is what they look like so let's go and take a look around in here take our way down into the middle of the farm middle of the yard got some good storage in this one a sort of open faced pole shed there and then the half round shed i know these are called quonsets in other parts of the world but certainly here in new zealand we would call them a half round uh, shed used for storage or putting bales in or things like that carry on over the other side here and i do believe this is set up as a bit of a dairy farm hence the sign out the front Looks like a vat of some description. I imagine that will be a milk vat. Now, there's no triggers showing up at this stage. I imagine that's probably because we don't own the farmland. In fact, we will just test that out while we're here. So we've bought the farmland, triggers turned on and everything like that. Nothing noticeable there, but I would suggest that that is a milk fill point for uh, your dairy shed. We'll figure out exactly where animals are as well. There's a little bit of that to try and figure out too. We're going to head around to the corner here and we've got some more silos and storage areas uh, we've got these bunkers so you could put dry fertilizer lime anything like that in there to store that loose if you wanted to be protected and then over the other side we've got a couple of different silage bunkers so the uh, concrete bunkers here on the right go and have a look in there and that will pop up if we have our menu going up there you go you can see we've got a fill level for chaff in those ones and then as well as that, we've got what is very typical here in New Zealand, which is a more of an open uh, silage bunker. So again, bring that menu back up and you can see again, we have a fill level there for chaff. So very typical here to make your silage on an open sided silage bunker. Now going and taking a little bit more of a look, we've got an, another animal barn here or animal pen. It's what I expect. And I haven't tested any of these things. I'm just speculating and making an assumption, but... This is a little bit of a feedlot. There you go. We've got a cow barn down the bottom. And we'll just go and have a look through. Manure. Probably feeding in here. And then this wraps around and connects into the back of the shed where you were standing on the other side of. So trying to simulate a New Zealand style dairy farm. Which is uh, quite cool. I do like it. Bit of a dead end. But for all intent purposes it does do a very good job of simulating that. And then access down through the farm. So you'll find a lot of New Zealand things like the uh, dairy shed. You'll drive through parts of the cattle yards or the shed to be able to get to the main part of the farm. We have a drain across there or a uh, little concrete nib to stop any effluent runoff that would then go and get captured in a slurry pit or something like that. And in fact, we just jump up on the other side of here. We've got what is very common, uh, a little bit more less than it used to be, but open effluent ponds. So settling ponds for slurry and manure that would come from washing down at the cow sheds. A nice little bit of detail and there's a few of these scattered around in other parts of the farm as well. So we're going to jump back in the pickup. That has been a look here at the first of the farms. Uh, just wanted to look down here. Difficult access. These are good big double gates, but as you can see, uh, a lot of smaller equipment would be used and the size of the fields would suggest that as well this field's only two and a half acres or something like that just as it's cycling through the different ones not sure which field number this is in fact i should have my map up field number 73 we just wait for that to cycle through again in the field info we'll be able to see exactly what the size of this one is but very typical nice little bit of rolling country nice little field there you go field 73 4.7 acres so again not the biggest field but decent size all the same so let's go and jump back in the pickup and we will carry on going for a bit of a drive around and looking at some of the other features it's moving on back down in towards the town like i said i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time driving around in there and looking at all the different production points and everything else that's in there it's pretty much exactly the same as southern cross station but just looking through it you'll notice that it definitely does feel a little, a little bit greener, uh, a lot more trees, a little bit more like a New Zealand town than an Australian town. But then looking back the other way, you can see these uh, rolling fields that we were looking at a second ago, uh, very much different to what was uh, one big field when we were on Southern Cross Station. So 
very cool very nice to see i do think this has really got a wonderful kiwi vibe to it maybe some of the cell points could be a little bit different might not be quite what we'd normally see but again working with what was there and i think they've done a good job so let's just actually go and take a look in here on the right uh, it looks like we've got ourselves a little bit of a farmhouse um, and then access down the back here past a couple of fields and it looks like we do have another animal pen or an animal pasture of some description down here as well uh, most of the farms will have a storage have a shed like that at least so you can store things in uh, this looks like sheep i would imagine this looks a lot like a sharing shed and jump out there and have a look uh, sheep barn there we go we're already seeing that so starting to see the sheep barn there uh, not sure what everything is from a trigger point of view we've got one there and then we've got a second sheep barn over there as well so making use of the uh, shepherd's staff would be very handy for trying to move animals around between the two different points there we go we do have another sheep barn out here so i'm assuming your sheep would sort of roam around in the pasture a little bit more it's quite cool so from here we're going to head across the road and head on up this way that is a dead end i don't think there's anything of any significance down that way might be some field accesses but other than that nothing else to see in here on the right is the sawmill now again if you remember the uh, southern cross sawmill it was very open whereas now with the trees and everything around it, it is much more closed off uh, much more condensed which is quite cool and that's exactly what you feel driving the whole way along now i didn't mention it there's a couple of custom crops on here we do have alfalfa and we do have clover as additional crops but otherwise it is just your standard crops nothing else to add to that now coming up here on the right we do have a farmyard over there on the left but we're going to pop into this one first and take a look in here as well it's so moving on around the farmhouse first very common you drive in the main drive shared access between the house and the farmyard you're coming down here and having a look we've got lots more storage lots of big open sheds in this one i think probably because it's near the arable land this would probably be a good one to be set up as a bit of an arable farm lots of storage space through there we do have a little bunker there could be used for storing lime or fertilizer in and then we're just going to head along this way and just take a very quick look just access to fields as you go up and down this way and this just carries on quite some distance as it goes around now i love these field edges here with the uh, poplars standing uh, again something we see a lot of poplar used as shelter belts wind breaks in between fields so nice to see those as well but i'm going to turn around from here i'm not going to go all the way along this one um, and go and have a look at that second farmyard that was on the other side of the road just carrying along up the road just a little bit further we're going to get to uh, the intersection here now this would have taken you down into the middle of the map and we'll take you down to the middle of the map we're going to go and have a look at these couple of farmyards we've got here we've got accesses into fields there on the left and on the right and this one's a little bit of a split yard again something you often see now uh, we've got some sheds some silage bunkers over there on the left at uh, the right sorry but on the left is our main farm entrance again one of the uh, Fonterra dairy signs there for the dairy farm so that gives away the fact that we're heading up into a dairy farm and looks to be a little bit more of a storage in there around hay shed and then our dairy farm here as well and there we go we do have a trigger next to this one for filling for the uh, milk silo but other than that i'm just going to have a quick look around this one nice to see a couple of different styles of cow sheds as well see in fact this is almost set up like a hearing bone style shed which is quite cool one of the two types of sheds that we often have here in new zealand uh feed trigger there i would expect or maybe manure or slurry uh feed dump point there at this end and it looks like we might have our animal buy point down the other end here or your loading point at least so you're able to bring your animals in back your truck in and load in and out from there that's quite a neat little dairy farm nice little setup uh very common the tanker turnaround so you drive in milk tanker would come in and around load up at the vat and then be set to drive back out less common deer running around the fields like they are at the moment not something you see a great deal of in new zealand until you get up on the fringes of the uh forest parks and national parks where they venture out from the bush and uh sometimes are seen in the farmland on the edges so heading back out this way we're going to go back to our right head along here now there is a farm access up here on the left 
that we're going to take, head on up this way, up this uh, long gravel road, which takes us up the hill. Go and have a look at exactly what's up this way. So the centre of the map is dominated by a little bit more of some hillier ground We sort of do start to head up and get these fields like this on the left and right which have a little bit more of the uh, rolling pastures. Got a, another cattle yard there loading the dock and uh, space to head down that way so obviously access to some more fields down there on the left. Then we carry on up this way, got access for another shed, we've got another pasture here on the right. I'll assume that that might be another sheep one. Jump out and double check that. No, that's a cow pasture. So that would be more if you were running beef stock. You might want to get those out here just for grazing rather than having them in a shed where you'd normally milk your dairy cows. Good fields. Good looking fields. I think these would be fun to get into and do some mowing, some silage, all those kind of things. Better with the bales that want to roll down the hills. But let's carry on up this way because we do access a couple more sheds, the older one here firstly and then right up on top of the hill here is another uh, another sheep pasture, another shearing shed and space for another sheep farm and then you can look back down and really see how much higher we've got up this way now I think we can probably actually take this road here take this track here and we will head back down onto the sealed road at the bottom of the hill and here we are back out on the road having just come down this sort of uh, little gravel track that wraps around a little bit of a forestry area if you logged on that to deal with and we will head on out and turn around to our left and just make out one of the farmyards we looked at before and we'll carry on heading up here towards the top end of the map and uh, around across the top before we head back down towards where we started out and we're right up in the very top right corner of the map we've got the forestry area up in that way just a single shed here but I think if we would take this road all the way back down this will take us right through the middle of the farmland back down to one of the farms we looked at earlier in fact we just take a look at the map here we are up this way and when we drove into this farm before we sort of came part way down probably turned around about here if we would carried on we would have ended up exactly where we are uh, but we've driven in off the main road using a gravel track that comes in this way but after we left here we crossed the road went across had a look at the dairy farm here and then we followed this track all the way up to the top of the hill had the uh, sheep sitting up the top here at the sharing shed and then we followed this little track down around the forestry in the middle down to the road and back along the top so we'll carry on down this way we will go and have a look at the farm and uh, the features over this side does look like we've got another house set there in the middle so we'll make sure we go and have a look at what there is in and around this area before we come back down uh, we won't bother going over to that cell point I don't think although it does look like we could have a little farmyard there that's worth going and checking out as well we're heading back across the top end of the map here I'm just taking a look in at some of these fields on the left we're getting into a little bit more of the bigger fields ones that are sort of set up a little bit more for arable work wheat things like that common crops grown in New Zealand you can still see there is in the middle there there is a little bit of the uh, lagoon water uh, marsh bog whatever you want to call it that was part of that field when it was in Southern Creek Station now looking down there nothing much to see I think it's just access to a farmhouse sort of tucked down there in between the fields but if we do head on just a little bit further up along here this is another farmyard here on our right Again, similar to the one down by the sawmill, probably a good one to set up an arable farm at if you were going to be running a combine and things like that. Uh, just a small shed there at the front, probably just for not much more than your pickup. Uh, we do have sort of the bog, marsh, swampy land here around this, which is a feature that was in Southern Cross Station. But otherwise, uh, we've got a shed there, looks like it might have a workshop trigger in it as well, which is nice. And then a little bit more storage space here at the back. Nice big open yard though, lots of space to put up some more sheds if you wanted to. And then we can just drive along here, not much else to see. Just towards the map border, just a few more fields. And access back down into the farm house from this side as well. We're carrying on our way down towards the bottom of the map, we're just getting up here to the river. Nice to see the sort of weeping willows around the waterways. Again, very common thing to see. And we're just going to carry on down this way a little bit now this building here on the left 
actually had a cell point in it on Southern Cross Station so you can see that's been removed and we've now got a few fields different types different sizes but we're just going to head on down this way we're actually almost back at the house where we started our tour off um, we're going to carry on past that and we're going to head off and down to the right and go and take a look at the cell point uh, and just see what else there is down in this bottom corner there we are that is where we started off we headed along that way to the left I'm just going to head on down this way to the right and go and just check out this last little piece nothing much to see in there just another little cattle yards and does look like there's another half round bale shed tucked in there as well just across the other side of the train tracks and then if we just carry on down here just that little bit further we are just going to find I think what I expected which is the cell point looking much the same as it does in Southern Cross Station not too much different the only, or the main difference between this and previously is it does look like this can only be accessed from the one direction. Previously you could drive through and go right round. It does look like that might be turned off or shut off. No access on or through here. And there we go. Nothing to carry on that way, but we do have the unload trigger and the cell point just to back up here in the centre. So we'll head back over to the house and uh, go for a little bit of a fly around the map just to give you an overview as we wrap things up here for our first look and tour of southern pastures. So from above you can really get a sense of the size of the fields and the layout of the farmyards. We're just heading over the dairy farm we first looked at before we drove through the town. Like I said, the town layout very, very much the same. In fact, almost identical without going through and comparing exactly with Southern Cross Station, exactly the same. Uh, but we drove across this way, headed across the river, we've got the sheep farm down there on the right, the cell point there in front of us, and then the sawmill down there right below us. We headed on up the road this way and we discovered these extra farmyards up in here. We've got a nice dairy farm in there on the left again with some of those wonderful effluent fields sitting out the side, and then a yard there on the right with some big sheds, probably giving you some good space to be able to set up an arable farm. The gravel road on the left heads up the hill, connects right up there on the top with a couple of sheep pastures. And we came back down the gravel road here in front of us and got back down on to the sealed road. Had a look over there on the right at the shed and that does link all the way through along that road back down to the big arable farm back down there near the bottom before we carried along the road this way at the top of the map drove underneath the shearing shed against these big rolling fields and got down to the top corner where there certainly is a lot more larger open fields which will be well suited to the arable farming that they have in them we didn't follow this little gravel track through here but as you can see it does just link back into the road down near the bottom Instead we went and looked at the farm here on the right, we've got the farmhouse back there and then a couple of sheds and storage space as well. Carried on down the road and headed on right down to the bottom there towards the cell point and had a look at what we had on the way down there. Again we'll just shoot through the middle and give you an overview here, we've got another little farmhouse on the left and then we're getting right back through to connecting with the dairy farm that we looked right at the other side linking everything through here uh, lots of smaller fields lots of grassland uh, nicely connected nicely laid out and i think the map does a fantastic job at capturing so many different aspects of farming and rural life in new zealand i just uh, i'm looking forward to it i'm hoping to be able to find some way that i can squeeze this into my schedule and uh, have a little bit of a play on because i'm looking forward to it and i'm excited to see a New Zealand map here in Farming Simulator 22. So, be interested to know what you think. Are you going to give it a download? Are you going to have a play on it? And what you think of it? If you're a Kiwi, and I know there's lots of you who do watch, what do you think of it? Is it capturing the New Zealand farming experience enough that others around the world playing Farming Simulator can get a little bit of a taste of it as well? I'd be keen to get your thoughts on it. Anyhow, that is it. That is our first look here at southern pastures by smith 97 gaming using the southern cross station map as a base from hox 23 i hope you've enjoyed that i hope you've found it interesting and uh, i do hope that you do find the time to download it and have a play and let me know what you think 
So as always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.